Okay, thank you for your uh, invitation and um, good, afternoon to, good afternoon to everybody. And in this talk, I will present the design and fabrication of a ultra wideband filter with some notches in the filter response. And uh, in the design of this particular device, uh, the um, circular circuit tool of uh, AWR has been very useful for minimizing the time uh, we needed for uh, the design. The contest of this uh, uh, project was the Expo in Milan 2015, and uh, I will show you later the contest in in of this project. This is the outline of the presentation, and uh, the first part is the motivation, why we decided to fabricate, to design and fabricate this device. Then we have uh, the specs and the analysis uh, of the specification. I will uh, present you the design procedure and uh, the design optimization that we did in uh, AWR. And finally, we have the filter validation and the conclusion. Let me start with uh, the motivation. Okay, as I said before, the context of this project is uh, the Expo 2015 in Milan. And uh, you can see here a map of the Expo. And uh, during the, Mac, the, the Expo in Milan, mobile service providers used several uh, base stations for the coverage at Milano Expo. And uh, each base station covered a different uh, Expo area. In addition, government used a uh, base station for security control up to C gigahertz in all uh, the expo areas. And you can see an example of this government uh, antenna. Here you can see the main lobe of uh, this antenna and the secondary lobes of the antenna of the uh, mobile service providers. And uh, in particular, one lob of uh, a mobile service antenna pointed uh, toward the, mo the main lob of one security antenna. And uh, for uh, this reason, we had the, there was uh, interference uh, um, in uh, the antenna of the um, government. And so the interference prevented the mobile service antenna to be used. Uh, and uh, so it was necessary to find uh, a way to allow the coexistence of both system, and uh, the idea was to develop some notched filters. In fact, it is well known that notched filters avoid interferences at mobile phone frequencies. In particular, they can uh, avoid the, the transmission or the receiving of some frequencies. And uh, so notched filters have been incorporated in the base station of the security control antenna, and in this way, the coexistence of both system was allowed. So now I will present you in particular the specification and uh, the analysis of the specification and uh, the, the way we decided to implement the device. Uh, in particular, one mobile uh, service provider, H3G, asked uh, us, RF Microtech, for a two-port device provi uh, providing high rejection notched band at all mobile frequencies to allow the coexistence of both the antenna systems. Here you can see the specification. In particular, there are uh, uh, five notched bands with a rejection of at least uh, 35 dB. The first notch band is around 0.8 gigahertz. Then we have another one at roughly 0.95 gigahertz, another at 1.8, and uh, one at uh, 2.1, and 2.5 gigahertz. Moreover, it is important to ensure a wideband transmission in uh, the range 80 megahertz up to 6 gigahertz, so a wide bandwidth, with an insertion loss uh, in the range 2, 3 dB. Uh, fortunately, we have not dimensional constraints, uh, but the, the big challenge was the urgency, because uh, they gave us just two weeks to design uh, and other two weeks to fabricate uh, and provide the, the, the device. And this uh, happened in April uh, 2015. So this is the mask of the device. You can see the S21 parameters, so the transmissions. And you can see in particular the transmission from 80 megahertz up to 6 gigahertz. 
and uh, the, uh, the 35 dB notches, uh, notches with 35 dB rejections, so that uh, are called uh, N1, N2, N3, N4, and N5. To realize uh, this device, the idea, the simpler idea was to use a transmission line that we call DL, uh, allowing the transmission, uh, the signal transmission from 80 megahertz to 6 gigahertz, and uh, um, the so you can see the the scheme of the transmission line, the bottom part of the slide, and then uh, to locate in uh, this transmission line to cascade five independent notched band filters (NBF), uh, one for each uh, uh, notch band. Each filter, each notch filter is an N nth order notch band filter consisting of N shunt resonators. And uh, so you can see again the line with the five uh, notched band filters. And uh, here you can see the order of filter that was necessary to fulfill uh, the requirement in terms of rejection and uh, transition in the bandwidth between notched band and transmission band. The other important thing is the Q factor of the resonators that uh, uh, must be used because in order to achieve uh, the good rejection and uh, a good re uh, transition in the, pa in the transition bandwidth, we need a loaded Q factor of the resonator that uh, must be above 1000. Moreover, the other important thing is to avoid the presence of harmonics, so spurious modes up to 6 gigahertz because uh, if not, uh, we have uh, repetitions of the notched uh, uh, at frequencies that uh, where the transmission must be ensured. And this is mainly critical for the lower frequency notched band where uh, the frequency is less than one gigahertz and we need to avoid harmonics uh, above six times the, the, the central frequency of the notch. Okay, so now I will present you the design procedure. The first thing that has been done was a circuital model in uh, AWR in order to design the, the expected desired response. Then we have a full wave design that has been done in another simulator that is ANSYS HSS, HFSS. Then we have the, the filter and connecting the, the all the parts that have been designed in the full wave simulator has been uh, combined in uh, AWR and uh, a circuital optimization of the connection between uh, this, uh, um, this part, these blocks, have been done in AWR. And, uh, and finally, of course, we carried out a final full wave analysis to check the agreement between the circuital optimization and the full wave uh, complete, complete uh, uh, analysis um, simulation. And then, of course, we have the fabrication and validation of the device. So let me start with the circuital model in AWR. Here you can see an example of the notch band filter. Uh, in particular, this is the case of a fourth order notch band filter where uh, the, the, the resonator is modeled as a shunt series resonator where we have a resistor, a capacitor, and an inductor. The, then the, the four resonators are connected through uh, TEM lambda over four lengths, TEM line and uh, uh, the resonator losses are modeled by uh, the resistance. Uh, this is the resistance of a serial resistor, uh, serial, uh, a serious um, resonator, sorry. And then we have the couplings, the couplings that is modeled by uh, the ratio between uh, the, the square of the inductance over the capacitance of the resonator, so the impedance ratio. Here you can see an example of the circuital response of one of the notch band filter, in particular the filter at uh, roughly 0 0.8 gigahertz. And uh, you can see the transition band that I mentioned before, where the, that is influenced by the, the order of the filter and also by the allotted Q factor of the resonators. Now I will show you the full wave model of these uh, uh, particular uh, types of notch and notched filters. Uh, the first things that I will show you is the transmission lines that we decided to use to realize the device. Uh, the idea was to use a low loss, non-dispersive uh, 50 ohm line, so I mean a, a line with a characteristic impedance of 50 ohm in order to be connected directly to the 
connectors that have a characteristic, uh, characteristic impedance of 50 ohm. Uh, the, the lines that we chose, is, uh, the physical line that we chose, is um, a rectangular coaxial line that uh, allows for a TEM mode. Um, this uh, transmission line is very similar to a circular coaxial line, but uh, it's easier to be realized with a uh, uh, milling process, and uh, it can be realized in different shape, in different shape factor, allowing for the same uh, characteristic impedance. Uh, you can see in the, the picture in, in the picture the behavior uh, of uh, the E field and of the H field, so it is a TEM mode. And uh, you can see below some different uh, possible shapes of this uh, coaxial line with the same uh, characteristic impedance. In uh, this picture you can see the, the interconnection between different sections of the transmission line having the same characteristic impedance but different geometries. In particular, you can see the N-type connector with an impedance of 50 ohm that is connected to the 50 ohm line with a shape that we call number one that is uh, smaller because it, uh, it, is, it has, it has uh, similar dimensions compared to that of the connector. Then we have an enlargement of the line here uh, that uh, is necessary because this line will be connected to the res uh, will be coupled to the resonators of the filter that are larger, and then we have also so the impedance of this line is uh, still 50 ohm, but the shape is different with respect to this other, and then we have some other area with uh, the impedance of 50 ohm, but we where we included some matched support in order to allow the the, the presence the of the metal. Uh, internal uh, line uh, of, the, of the transmission line. Now I will show you the, the design of the different uh, resonators that can be used. I will start with the resonator used for the notch band uh, filter number three, four and five, so that at a higher frequency. Uh, the idea was to use a lambda by four, uh, lambda over four uh, resonator uh, it can be realized using uh, a metal post uh, shielded in a cavity uh, that is uh, short circuited at one hand and open at the other hand. This uh, post can be coupled to the transmission line by uh, distances between the line and the end open end of the, con of the post. And uh, so we have a capacitance between the transmission lines and the post and uh, these capacitance, of course, uh, determine uh, uh, the, the coupling, but also affect uh, the frequency of the, of the resonator. Um, okay, I, it is important to consider that uh, in the case of uh, notch band frequency number three, a uh, lambda over four resonator at 1.4, 1.8 gigahertz presents the first higher order mode at a frequency that is lower than six gigahertz, so it is not acceptable for us. And so we modified a little this uh, shape of the resonator, uh, introducing uh, uh, increasing the capacitance of the resonator in order to move up in frequency the first uh, higher order modes. And, uh, and in this way, we were able to, to move the first higher order modes of this resonator above 6.5 gigahertz. So in a region of the spectrum that does not affect the performance of the final device. Here you can see an example of the response of this resonator. Uh, and um, in this is in the case of the lower frequency resonator. And uh, as I said before, the capacitance uh, affect both the, the couplings and the frequency. Uh, in the case, during the design, each uh, uh, resonator has been uh, designed in order to match the AWR circuital response of the resonators with the full wave design. Here you can see a, com a, a comparison uh, uh, between uh, the circuital model and uh, the full wave model. This is in the case of uh, the notch resonator number three. So you can see that the five resonators in the circuital model and in the full wave 3D model and the the, the four transmission lines uh, that are uh, lambda over four uh, 
transmission line realizing coaxial uh, square uh, transmission line. The total length of the device is roughly 20 centimeter. Now I will show you the design of the notch band, uh, the resonator used for the notch band filter number one and two, so the, the, that with the lower frequency uh, in the spectrum. In this case, the ratio between the first harmonics, the first higher order mode of the, of the resonator and the fundamental mode uh, is above six. So it, uh, this, um, this is a particular constraint that did not allow us to implement the resonator with the same uh, geometry used for the notch filter 3, 4, and 5. For this reason, we decided to use another type of resonator that is uh, constituted by uh, a planar resonator with a parallel plate capacitance uh, that we call C1 uh, at uh, the open end, and uh, that is uh, parallel coupled to the transmission lines. So you can see here, this is the main part of the resonator. Then we have uh, the capacitance that is realizing using both surfaces of the, this PCB sha customized shape uh, uh, part. And then we have uh, the couplings to the lines that is realized by a parallel coupling between the resonator and the line. In this way, the, the value of the coupling can be larger uh, because you have to consider that the relative bandwidth of these notch band filters one and two is larger compared to that of the resonators of, uh, of the filters at higher frequencies. Uh, also in this case, we can see a comparison between the circuital model in AWR and the full wave de uh, design. So you can see the four resonators because in this case the order is four and uh, the transmission lines, the three transmission lines used in the, uh, to, to separate and to couple the different resonators of the filter. The length in this case is similar. Here you can see a, a graph comparing the AWR model and the HFSL simulation the, the matching is good enough to, to allow for the fulfillment of the requirement, and so uh, this has been done for all the five uh, filters. Uh, at this point, we had uh, the, th all the blocks that, are, uh, that were necessary to implement the final device, and so each uh, full wave design optimized thanks to the circuital model in AWR had been uh, imported in AWR uh, as a touchstone file with a, a probably um, a, a carefully uh, the embed of the faces at all ports and a circuital optimization uh, optimizing the length of the transmission lines between these ports has been done in uh, AWR. As I said before, uh, the one of the main uh, principal uh, uh, requirement was to have a good insertion loss, return loss mainly insertion loss in the 80 megahertz uh, to 6 gigahertz range. And uh, this is affected by the length of all uh, the distances that are uh, present in the structure between the, the several blocks used uh, in for the cascaded uh, structure. The other important thing was, uh, the other important challenge was the urgency, because as I said before, we had just uh, two weeks uh, to implement all the design. So where so you have to consider that uh, more than one week, so we, we spent uh, more than one week for the design of the parts that I already showed you. And so we had a few days to finalize the optimization before start the fabrication of the devices. So uh, the solution that we, 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 we decided to, to, to use was to optimize uh, the, the, the distances between the blocks uh, thanks to a good circuital optimization as that uh, uh, that is present in AWR. Um, so uh, we had uh, in total 17 blocks from the full wave simulator. These were, were imported in AWR. We have to consider that we have the five uh, the filter blocks, but we have also, also other discontinuities uh, that are the, the bands, the supports for the transmission lines, and the input-output transitions that uh, have been not shown here. And uh, so uh, you can see the, co the, the total number of the 70 touchstone blocks and uh, the 16 uh, transmission lines that have been optimized as uh, TEM transmission lines. 
and uh, so the length of these transmission lines were optimized uh, thank thanks to the optimization optimizator present in AWR. Here you can see the final, the, the final, um, the final results of the optimization done in AWR, and you can see that uh, the insertion loss uh, ripple have been uh, minimized thanks to this optimization and the mask of the filter. Of the, of the total filter, so I mean of the cascade of the five notches is uh, fulfilled. And uh, then after that, uh, we implemented the full wave design using the length optimized in AWR, and uh, we had this structure that uh, so is constituted by the five uh, notch band uh, filters and the interconnections between the filters and the other parts uh, used for the structure. And uh, we carried out a full wave simulation of uh, this structure that uh, lasts for 24 hours. And so you can understand that if we, we had to optimize this in a full wave simulator, we needed uh, 100 days probably. So it was not acceptable. And for this reason, uh, AWR was very helpful. And uh, here you can see a comparison between uh, the uh, AWR simulations, that is the dashed cards, and uh, the HFSS simulation using the length uh, gave us uh, by uh, AWR, and the, the matching is very good. Mm, after that, of course, uh, we, we fabricated the device. This is the mechanical design of the structure, and you can see the, the dimensions that are not uh, small, of course, because it's more than 50 by 50 centimeter for the footprint, but uh, we had not uh, geometrical constraint or physical constraint, so this is not uh, an issue. And uh, here you can see some pictures of the structure before the final measurement, and uh, with the different part, you can see here uh, the, the resonator used for the high frequency filter, and you can see here the resonator used for the lower frequency filter, the interconnection, the support used for the transmission lines, and uh, of course the final assembly of the structure with the connection to the vector na network analyzer for the measurements. And uh, here you can see uh, co the comparison between uh, the, the, the response of uh, the, the, circuit the, the original circuit art simulation, so in uh, AWR, that is the red curve, then we have the blue dashed curve that is the full wave design uh, thanks to the optimization in, a in uh, AWR. And then we have the measurement uh, that is uh, good enough uh, up to 5.1 gigahertz because then we have some little ripple that in any case has been considered acceptable by the customer. And uh, so uh, now I think I can, I can conclude the talk. Um, just to summarizing what I showed, um, one of mobile uh, service provider in Italy, H3G, uh, uh, and uh, the Italian government uh, urgently required a, complen a complex customized notched filter for the Expo 2015 in Milan. Uh, the device uh, uh, that we fabricated in, uh, designed and fabricated in amounts in RF Microtech is composed by several cascaded blocks and the distance between the blocks need to be carefully optimized uh, in order to minimize the ripple of the return loss and insertion loss. Uh, to speed up the design procedure, uh, uh, the time procedure minimizing full wave simulation and optim uh, optimizing distances between full wave blocks uh, in uh, AWR has been adopted uh, thanks to the circuit uh, tools uh, in AWR. Uh, and uh, AWR demonstrates its uh, potentiality in matching uh, the urgency uh, of the project. And uh, so the final check by full wave simulation and experimental uh, uh, results validate the, the design procedure that we did. And the device, uh, probably, um, the device worked uh, well in uh, 2015 at the Expo in Milan. So uh, before concluding, I would like to, to know to, to thank uh, the other people that worked with me uh, to this project. Uh, my, uh, my chief, uh, Professor Roberto Sorrentino, um, my colleague Fabrizio Cacciamani and Luca Marcaccioli in RF Microtech. And of course, I would like to thank uh, H3G that uh, are allowing us to show these results. Uh, and so thank you very much to you and uh, 
Thanks.